hanging a hobbit door. Hi there, Thack from Thack Ironworks. Welcome to this video. Uh, this is our second installment in the Hobbit whole series, and I know what you're saying to yourself right now. You haven't even talked about this, Thack. You haven't even walked us through what this whole project is all about. Um, I've had a very specific uh, focus on the past video and this video. Past video, I did this window here, stone that in, and at the end of the video, if you've seen that one, I talked about changing out the keystone, which I have subsequently done, and you can see the new keystone in there. But today, hi, we're, we're hanging the door, and this is a huge one for me. Um, the logistical challenge of this is it. It's big. I'm no engineer and I'm really just flying by the seat of my pants guesstimating on a lot of things here. We have our door over here. Let's come and look at it. So here's our actual door which is three inch thick cedar, a five foot circle essentially, um, and it is three layers of one inch thick boards laminated together. So you have um, essentially a vertical, a horizontal, and then another vertical face creating a composite plywood, if you will, uh, making for a really good structure for the door. We'll talk about this piece of wood in a little bit, but right now let's get back to the actual opening. Here is the door itself, a five foot circle and three inches thick. So you see it's got some thickness to it and quite heavy, I'm guessing over 150 pounds, maybe upwards of two, somewhere around there. Um, and this is reclaimed Western red cedar. And as it's reclaimed, it's got bolt holes from the carriage bolts. Um, so my first step, I'm going to add this to, to give it more texture because that's what I'm all about and I wanted to get that um, look. But first of all, I got to fill in these holes and the way I'm doing that is just drilling them out a little larger. They were about three eighths. I'm drilling them out half inch and I've got half inch dowel here, which I've cut off into pieces that are just a little longer than they need to be. And I'm just going to dip them in some glue. Voila, and then I can add that off. So I think I've got about 25 of these to do. All right, so we're ready for adsing now, and if you are a faithful viewer, you might remember the video where I made this ads, and now we get to see it in action. So here we go, lots of work. All right, that was labor intensive. So now um, I'm just gonna pull it up onto a table and sand out some of the splintery parts just to kind of smooth things over a little bit. Okay, after much deliberation, I decided I am going to stain the outer face of this with uh, Cabernet. Um, I wanted red, but I didn't, I 
tried painted red um, and wasn't quite happy with that. I wanted something a little bit more organic, something that showed the um, grain of the wood. On the other side, incidentally, I did early American as far as the stain color. All right, so I'm going to weld up the hinges now. Um, the pintle portion of it, this is called a pintle, um, and I've got these that I had left over from a job from about 15 years ago. So I'm going to use them. What I need to do is weld them to the stem, and um, I need to get really good penetration on this to be able to hold the, the hundreds of pounds of weight or torque that's going to be on this thing. So I want to get good welds, so I've done deep uh, um, chamfers there so I can get good penetration and I've got the welder up at five so quite hot now I want to just set this up I've got it at the appropriate height here so this will be where I want it the one thing I'm going to do is rather than have this coming off um, totally square with this I want it leaning to this side I'm exaggerating here because of the way the door is going to be on there and putting um, its weight on there I want to default to this thing being angled slightly away from it so that um, it could get pulled into position. So that's what I'm doing. You probably can't see the subtlety of that on the camera, but I'm going to tack this into position here. All right, so I've been working on this uh, for well over a year now. I'm at about month 14, I think. Um, and one of the first things I did was to build the uh, surround or the jam, door jam, I guess you want to call it, for the Hobbit door itself. And I built a steel ring um, inside a square frame. And out of that, I put two receiver square tubes, um, these receiver tubes to receive the pintle part of the hinge. So this whole structure has been bolted, lagged into the frame of the house and then um, masoned in with the stonework. So what I've got is a pretty rigid structure but a perfect circle and um, basically it is just ready now to receive the door. First thing I have to do, I've already got this one in place, is to put my pintles in place. I've ground this out to more or less fit here, but it's snagging up. So what I need to do is just do a little bit more grinding on there. I want to be able to um, just hand fit that in there to almost the depth and then pound in the last little bit for it to uh, really lock itself into place. All right. Just because there's quite a bit of weight on this and a lot of torque, um, these hinges are relatively close together for how big and 
wide a door this is, but it's really, I got them as far apart as I could. So what I'm gonna do is put in these tiny little roller bearings to help um, ease the burden, if you will. And I've got these thrust washers. I don't know. I guess I will put one in the bottom as well. Thrust washer, then the roller bearing or thrust bearing as I call them. Okay, so we've got that. Slide this in place now. And we've got something that moves quite freely. Uh, do the same thing for the top one and then moving on. All right, so I've got my hinges in place and incidentally I should point out these are just stubs of what will be the finished hingery on this whole thing. Um, there's gonna be a fairly elaborate hinge that will encompass most of the door and that will help support the structure. What I was doing here is just getting the actual nitty gritty um, of uh, the working part of the hinge so that I can hang this thing um, and then once it's hung, we can get working on um, the decorative um, hinge, if you will, which will provide additional support. But this basically, I'm just giving enough that I should be able to hang it for now um, without it sagging unduly. I may have to prop it until it actually has the support of its other hinges. Also, I'm leaving these things raw from the forge. I wanna let this thing rust naturally. I'm really going for a earthy, organic feel to this. That's why I wanted to do the stained wood um, and then I've got the very rough stone and the rough stone work. So everything, I think I just liked this thing to rust over time. I, I love doors um, when I go to Europe that have that, that have been around for 500 years and they just nice rusted iron um, on wood. So anyway, enough about that. Now I need to hang this. I've got my jam here. There's a steel frame within here where the, the door is going to go against but I've got extra space there. I want to put some sort of weather stripping and I'm, the plan is to put some, a layer of felt there, something organic, something pr primitive, not a modern um, weather stripping, but something that the door can sponge against um, and create a nice weather seal and also not be slamming loudly every time you use it. Anyway, what I'm getting at is right now I have two, where the hinge bottoms out here, and where this uh, back plate is, there is three and three quarter inches. As I mentioned uh, moments ago, the door itself is three inches thick. That leaves me an extra three quarter of an inch for my future weather stripping. So how do I get the door positioned in place that that's um, going to happen? I decided I'm just going to take this five eighths uh, little block of plywood here, put a couple of those and screw them onto the back of the door so they butt onto here and just bring this out close enough that I can get this whole thing mounted in the right area. This is where things are getting really fuzzy for me because I've got to get the door in position and then lag it into place and hopefully it swings freely from there. So let's see what happens. The convenient thing about a round door is that you can roll it. It's actually fairly easy to move. It's just that I'm kind of chewing up my outer edge, which I also might be putting weather stripping on. Okay, I gotta get my orientation correct here. Okay, here goes nothing. Well, this is embarrassing. I did, never did a test fitting to make sure everything fit here. This thing is, um, it's, it looks like a good fit here, but the way the stone comes out, this thing will not get in position. And it looks like instead of me slapping this up and going very quickly, I'm going to have to do some trimming on the stone here and also probably some sanding on the wood. We are a little ways away from this happening. Uh, okay. Here we go.
All right, that was awkward. And still the thing is super tight. I'm uh, probably gonna have to use some grinding, but I'm gonna try to, what I'm gonna try to do is wedge it up even farther and then I'm going to put it in place and see what happens. All right, here goes nothing. I've got it vertical. I've got it wedged up as tight to the top as I can, hoping that when I put these legs in and let it go under its weight that it will just sag just enough to open up. Um, thinking that it's going to probably bind up quite a bit, I'm going to have to get in and grind afterwards, but let's see if we can actually get this thing hanging. Here goes nothing. Binding here. I think I'm gonna have to go through the window and push out from the inside. So just excuse me while I. Uh... <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> Do it from the bottom. <laughs> Alright, I'm not going to say that wasn't without some casualties. Some bruises. And uh, obviously it needs a little more work. You can tell where it's sliding past there. I still need to take more stone away. I never would have believed that the way that swings out there. but. As I said, I'm not an engineer. I was just doing this by the seat of my pants and I'm just happy that it actually functioned as a door there. Okay, let me play around a little bit and let's see if we can get this working a little bit better, shall we? Okay, just want a quick point out my construction door. I did this last fall when I was building the Hobbit hole and I wanted to close it in for the winter. So I just did a piece of plywood here that kind of, two pieces of plywood kind of screwed together and painted it red because I was thinking I've always liked the bright red door um, and I thought I'd try that out but I just felt it was a little too Japanese not that I'm opposed to that and I think that's kind of cool for a garden feature but it really had a Japanese aspect to it so once I really got into thinking about the wood on the door I wanted to stick with something more natural to show the natural grain of it so I did not go for the red door also when I roughed out my hinges I just did something really quick and dirty here and the first time I opened it up, this hinge bent and the door never closed properly after that. So I knew that I needed to make my actual hinges very robust. So there you go. That was fun. Okay, did some fine tuning there. Things are now opening. And it goes a full 180, opens up, which will be nice. I can still have it wide open then. Um, incidentally, I'll be doing some decorative ironwork on the inside of the, the door as well, um, yet to be determined. And as I mentioned, the outside, we already have a design um, made up for what the hinges are going to be. And I'm seeing that I need to have that because this thing is flexing at this point here. We need to tie this together um, to make this door um, solid and secure. Um, that is an upcoming project with a yet to be named uh, person who is collaborating with me on this. This is something I've reached out to him um, and hopefully this can all happen very quickly. Now that we've got this up in place, I'm hoping that he'll be excited and be able to jump on to the project and get this part finished here so we can get a really nice um, set of uh, hinges on here, some really cool ironwork. So that is the plan. Um, as I said, this is video two in my Hobbit Hole series, and we have yet to really discuss the entire scope of what this project is and what it means and what I'm actually doing. We've been very uh, focused just in this area here. I promise if you come back, stick around, and you better subscribe 
Um, come back to the next video and we'll do an actual walkthrough and I will talk about um, the, the entire process. We will also uh, do a little slideshow of some of the um, initial build, how this whole skeleton came together and got to the point where I am at 80% uh, of the stonework done. But this whole project has a lot more ironwork that will be um, added into it as we go and I hope you will stick around for the rest of the series. I think it's a pretty uh, interesting project and I guess that is it for now. I'm going to go get cleaned up. So thanks for joining us. Uh, please subscribe, uh, the bell, uh, comments, uh, Patreon, you know, all those things. You know what to do. Uh, that's it for me. Back out. See ya!